you may be able to hear the Sure Lab priming. What we're going to do during that process, which takes about 40 minutes, is we're going to unbox and set up the sorter. I'm going to remove the outer box from the sorter. Probably a little bit easier with two people. In this box, I have a variety of items. One is the leg for the sorter. But when we install the sorter, it will use a slightly different exit tray. Underneath the exit tray is a plastic guide. We will install this and it will help guide the photo prints into the 10 bin sorter. In the bottom of this accessory box are several items. One is the hardware for the sorter to be put together. These are the screws and flanges that are necessary to attach it to the Sure Lab. I can remove the main conveyor unit from its box. The smaller accessory box includes the top eject unit. We'll remove that now. When handling the top eject unit, you want to be very careful of this area and not place it on that side. Now I'm going to remove the remaining packaging material. This box just lifts straight up. I have a styrofoam support. Now we're going to remove the plastic that's covering and protecting the sorter. Now I'm going to remove the 10 bin sorter from the pallet. I recommend this be done with two people. I'm just going to grab it, pick it up. One thing you want to be sure about with the sorter is that you remove all of the packaging material. There's quite a bit and some of it is hard to find. So we'll start with the most obvious. If you were to just look down on the top of the 10 bin sorter at this point, you might think you're done removing packaging, but there's actually quite a bit more. To access that material, we have to tip the sorter on its backside, and that will reveal the remainder of the packaging we need to remove. The first thing we're going to go to is this tab. And it's got two wires that are attached to two pieces of styrofoam. I want to make sure I get those styrofoam blocks out. It takes a little bit of effort. So that's one. The next one actually has some tape along the edge of it. So I'm going to remove that, and then I'm going to remove it. At this point, I removed all the packaging material, and I'm going to stand it back up on its feet. As I said earlier, there's a lot of packaging in the sorter unit. I thought I had it all, but on further inspection, I realized there's another styrofoam piece in here at the front of the sorter unit. So again, be very careful that you've removed all the packaging material from the sorter. In order to connect the conveyor unit to the 10 bin unit, we need to remove this cover. It's got three screws. To attach the conveyor, I need to remove three screws. Now I need to put the leg on the conveyor unit. I'm going to flip it over. And on the side with the bar here, basically going to place the leg. I'm going to loosen this screw a little bit, and it should drop into place. And we'll loosen this one. And I don't want to take the screw out. I just want it to drop into place, and then we can tighten it. When I pick up the conveyor, I want you to notice I still have some packing material down here in the lower right corner. That protects the motor and the encoder strip. It's very important that I leave that there until I'm done because I don't want to damage that piece. And line it up. Start attaching the screws. Once I'm done, and assured that that's tight, I can remove the protective cover from the motor and then make the connection from the sorter to the conveyor. Now that I have the conveyor and sorter connected, I'm going to put the metal housing back on. So I'm going to loosely insert the two bottom screws. This is going to support the metal cover while I put the third one in place. So with those two in loosely, I can now pivot this cover onto those rotate it in place, and install the third screw. The next thing I'm going to do is take the packing material and screws off of the top eject unit. I'm going to place this over the edge so I protect this side of it. I don't want to set that down on, directly on something. So I'm going to remove the packing material, and I'm going to remove four screws from each side.
I now need to turn off SureLab in order to install the sorter. I don't do that from the back of the unit. At this point forward, powering on and powering off SureLab is done from the client PC. So I'm going to go do that from software. I'd started the post-operation check. By the time I got back to the printer, the LED had gone from green to flashing to off. So SureLab is now powered off. Before we install the sorter, we want to make sure the power to the unit is completely off. So I'm going to power the unit off with the power switch. I'm also going to turn off the humidity control. And then I'm going to pull the AC plug. I'm going to need to remove this rear panel, so I need to disconnect the USB cable. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the rear cover. It's got two screws on the top and two screws on the bottom. So I'm going to get all these cables out of the way for the time being. In order to connect the sorter, I need to remove the cover over the plug. That has two screws. To install the top ejector unit, I need to remove the five screws from this cover. I'm not actually going to take the cover off, I'm just going to remove the screws. Part of the sorter hardware is two special screws. These are small screws and they have small circular bushings. They're not, the spacers aren't attached to the screws, so you want to be very careful not to lose them. And I'm going to do this by hand with a regular screwdriver. And I'm just going to install them loosely for now. Now I'm going to bring the top eject unit in and put it on the screws I just installed. Now I'm going to install the lower screw and tighten both sides. Tighten this one. Now we're going to do the other side. Next I need to thread the cable on the right side of SureLab through and make the connection to the main board. So to do that, I'm basically going to feed it through this hole and just push it on down. I want to make sure that it doesn't kink up here. I'm going to be a little bit careful about how that goes in. I'm going to route it through this connector. And then I'm going to install it on this connector that's kind of buried underneath here. Next, I need to thread the cable on the left side of the SureLab unit. We'll get it started. Pull it through. I'm going to release this connector. You pinch it inwards. Put the cable in there. I'm going to release this connector. Again, it's a pinch. And route this through there. The rest of this then needs to go under this unit and go into the connector on the bottom of the control board here. What I want to do is make sure this is going to be out of the way and not be caught by the panel or anything else. So I'm going to secure it with a piece of the blue packing tape I'd taken off the unit. Lastly, I'm going to remove the final piece of packing material from the top eject unit. The key to putting the top eject unit covers on is to pay attention to these little guides. These guides need to line up with the sheet metal bracket. I'm going to slip the right cover into place and secure it with the screws. Next is the left cover of the top eject unit. So again, sliding in from the rear, and I'm going to fasten the four screws I'd taken out earlier. Now that the top eject unit is installed, we have to install the remainder of the sorter. The top eject unit by itself will not operate. I've already started the two lower screws for the back cover. What I'm going to do is place the cover on those screws and then pivot into place and secure the top ones. 
To install the 10-bin sorter to the SureLab unit, there's six pan head screws that were included in the accessory kit. Two of those are going to go on the rear bracket. That's going to go underneath here. I'm going to put a screw in. And I've got to get low. And we're going to screw that into place. Put one in loosely first. Now we're going to install the side bracket. I can now move the sorter into place. Now I'm going to install the screw on the side of the sorter. Four long screws are included with the accessory kit. Two of them will secure the front end to the bracket we just put in. Next I need to gently move the sorter bin down so I can access the area that will hold the nut as I secure the screw through the frame. What I'm going to do is just place the screws through the mounts by hand. At this point, I'm going to reach in and place the nut on the back side of the screw and then tighten it down. Before we move to the rear of the sorter unit to attach it, I need to make sure the bin is in the proper orientation. So I'm going to move it down to horizontal. At this point, I'd also like to point out the paper detection for front bin full. Basically, we have a sensor here that reflects off the triangle here to see if there's paper in the bin. I'm going to secure the sorter to the rear frame. I also need to secure the sorter to the rear bracket I installed earlier. That's two screws. These are long screws as well. The last of the pan head screws goes up and underneath the sorter under the rear panel. We're now ready to make the connection between the sorter and the SureLab unit. The clear plastic guide now gets installed on top of the conveyor unit. To do that, I need to remove the three white thumb screws. And then put the, position the guide in place. It's going to go under the rollers, and there's cutouts for these knobs. I put those in place, and then re-secure with the thumb screws. Okay, so the sorter itself is now installed. All that's left is to put the printer PC back in place and get everything cabled up. I move the piece. Of the last piece is to install the sorter eject tray. It's different than the regular tray and it goes on the left hand side of the sorter unit. After we install the SureLab sorter hardware, we need to enable its use in software. To do this, we use the maintenance utility on a client PC. First, do a pre operation check to bring SureLab online. Click OK on any prompts that may occur. Click on the maintenance utility screen to ensure it's the active window and press Control Alt S. Enter the admin password and click OK. To enable the sorter, click on Settings and Maintenance. You'll see Settings for Optional Equipment. Click on it. Just up from the bottom right is an area for the sorter long paper eject unit. With the sorter installed, it should show as attached but not yet enabled. Click on Enabled and then Apply. It will take a few seconds to communicate the settings to SureLab, then it will present a final dialog to confirm the new setting. Press OK. We are now done and can press back to go to the main screen of the maintenance utility. SureLab and the sorter are now ready to accept print jobs. This last step to go back to the main screen of the maintenance utility is very important. If any client PC connected to SureLab has the maintenance utility in an active state, SureLab will not print. With the sorter now enabled, print jobs will eject to one of three possible locations. Regardless of media width, if the job is longer than 12 inches and up to the maximum of 48 inches, it will print from the top eject unit. Prints come out face down over the top of SureLab. Prints will display a removal message between each print. This message can be disabled in the maintenance utility 
for continuous printing on lengths between 12 and 18 inches long. For prints up to 12 inches in length, the path is determined by the width of the media. For 10 and 12 inch media, compatible with a rear media bin of a single or dual roll SureLab, print jobs will convey and drop into the left side catch tray when viewed from the front of SureLab. 10 inch media is very productive, as standard prints and packages run slightly faster and without waste when compared to 8 inch media. For example, you can print a 10 by 8 or a 10 by 7, the 10 by 7 being a 2 up 5 by 7 or 8 up 2.5 by 3.5 wallet. Printing 10 by 7 saves an inch of media per print versus the traditional 8 by 10 print unit. For media up to 8 inches wide, including 4, 5, 6, and 8 inches, and 12 inches in length, the prints will convey to the right and utilize the 10 bin job sorter. Each job bin can hold up to 50 prints. This is convenient for keeping prints within a job together. To sort together, all prints must be of the same size and sent as a continuously batched file. Please note, the green button on the front of the 10 bin unit will jog the sorter one bid forward when pressed.